Hey, what's up? My name is Isaac Oster. I'm a technical artist in the game industry and my area of specialization is working on tools and pipelines. I had a few free cycles and thought it would be fun to write a Python code assistant for Unreal using OpenAI's ChatGPT. I'm making the tool available for free for anyone interested in implementing an AI solution in your own projects. Working with the OpenAI API is pretty straightforward. The documentation is easy to use and they have a few basic examples that covered my use case scenario. You'll need to create an account and do a little setup to get this tool to work and I'll, I'll talk about all that stuff shortly. Overall, the generated code is kind of a mixed bag. I have a prompt that generates functional code, but most of the prompts I've tried have pretty serious errors. It's early days for this technology and I'm confident it will continue to improve. And even in the context of non-functional code, there is still some utility. For example, it might identify the correct method, but it calls it on the wrong class. In order to capitalize on this behavior, I added a search feature where all you need to do is highlight a section of code and press the search button, and the tool will open up the correct API documentation, and you can take it from there. I also added a feature to run the code in your open session of Unreal directly from the tool, an option to save the code as a Python file, and a feature called temperature, which controls the level of freedom and creativity the model has in determining a response. The tool is not limited to Python API queries. You can ask it just about anything you want. So let's take a quick look at a few examples. So I've got a few prompts here. The first one is going to request a function to select all the static mesh actors in this level. The next one is going to write a function to get the materials from a selected static mesh. The third question is gonna ask the difference between hardware ray tracing and Lumen. I'm gonna get some explanation of what a simple for loop is, and then I'm gonna get an explanation on something that's a little bit more complicated, which is some actual Unreal Python code. So we'll go ahead and open up the tool. The tool has a prompt window and the response window. If you wanna run the code, you push the button called Run Code. If you wanna search the Unreal Python API, you've gotta highlight some code. And if you want to save it, you can just go ahead and push this button here. So let's grab our first prompt. I'm going to just paste it in here and hit submit question. Now it's going to take maybe five or 10 seconds. I'll probably edit this down, but uh, it's not very long, but it's not nothing. Yeah, that's about as long as it took. Okay, so here's the code. And if I hit run code, it won't generate any errors, but it won't actually do anything because it's not calling itself. So we'll just add a little extra something here. So we'll just call this function that it defined, which is gonna return a list of the static mesh actors. And we're just gonna go through and print uh, all of the names for each static mesh actor. So now if I hit run code, it'll go ahead and generate that list, which is pretty cool, right? There are some issues. This class here, editor level library is deprecated as of five, probably 0.0. So a little bit sketchy there. And I think it does actually warn that you're using deprecated functions here. So Unreal knows, but the OpenAI model doesn't know yet. And even if you say, make sure you're not using a deprecated function, it still generates the same code. Okay, let's look at this next prompt. I don't have a selected mesh here to test it, but it's probably not gonna work. It could, I don't know, I'm not, not gonna really go through the details, but. A very useful thing here is you can highlight this get material. I'm gonna scoot this over and bring up my browser real quick. So if I highlight the, uh, the thing I'm curious about and hit search the Unreal Python API, it'll go ahead and just show me all of the things that have the phrase that I've highlighted in them. So in this case, static mesh get material, that would probably be the right thing that I'm looking for here. So it's not necessarily like a material slot like, I don't know, whatever. It's without a mesh selected, I would need to generate some extra code to test this, but you know, that's part of the fun, right? All right, let's take a look now at the next prompt, which is basically asking for an explanation of the difference between hardware ray tracing and Lumen and Unreal. All right, so it's gonna give you a nice little explanation of what hardware ray tracing is, and then a definition of Lumen and a little bit of information about why Lumen looks better, but isn't as performant. Okay, so that's pretty useful. Let's look at a quick example of like a very basic Python code here, which is just gonna do a, a simple for loop. And it doesn't take very long to get to the answers. It's gonna go ahead and tell you what that's gonna do. And then we can grab our final prompt here. 
and it'll tell you exactly what it's going to do. So it's really good at understanding what the code does if you've already written it, or if you've got some example of some other code that you're curious about. It's touch and go on whether or not the code that it writes is going to work for you. But let's say you liked it. This is obviously not Python code. If I try to run it, I'm probably going to get an error. Uh, I can save it as Python file. This is going to bring this up like a normal file save dialog thing. So there you go. If you want to use a different version of Unreal, you can select it there. And then this is the temperature. You can mouse over this and you'll get a tooltip that'll basically tell you what this is doing. The lower this value is, the more you're going to get the exact same answer every time. The higher the value is, I think it goes up to two, you will get an answer that is more creative, but also maybe off the reservation. So let's take a quick look at the setup for this tool. So this is the OpenAI website. You're going to have to create an account here. I think they'll give you uh, like a $5 credit to play around with. And, and $5 is actually a pretty decent amount of queries. I think it's about half a penny per query. I've been playing with this for a few days now. And this is my usage. You can see uh, per day, I uh, currently have spent 20 cents of my $20 monthly budget. If you had like an entire studio that was testing with your $5 you know, initial credit, you could probably get about a thousand queries, which would be a decent amount of data. So the, in terms of the cost structure, it's hard to beat. It's pretty great. So the documentation worth reading through just to get an idea of, of how it's all kind of working, like what the, the big picture process is. There's an API reference here. We're going to need to do some module installations. I've got that stuff kind of laid out right here. And then just examples. I've got it in Node.js and Python and, and uh, I think maybe one other language here. But this is how I figured out what's going on in terms of the process for creating the, the queries. It's really, really easy. And then what it does is it just returns like a, a dictionary and, and the information that you're looking for is going to be embedded in that dictionary somewhere. So it's pretty easy to get. There are some terms here. I've already mentioned temperature. There's another version of the same idea called top P. I did include it, but I just didn't see a difference between the two and I didn't want to be too confusing. So I got rid of the top P because temperature seemed to be the one that was showing up most in the examples here. And then whatever, you can go through and kind of read through some of the rest of that stuff. Do you want to, you want to add parameters? Please feel free. So that is the open AI API. You will need to create an API key, and then that has to get added to your environment variables. So it's very simple to do that. This line of code here, you just want to set this variable equal to whatever your API key is, and then uncomment this out. It only needs to run one time. It'll add it to your environment variables, and then you can just get that data here procedurally. All right, so there's a little bit of setup required on the Unreal side. You've got to tell Unreal where it can find your default Python module installation location, which is going to be typically this path. You'll have to update the uh, user in Python version. And then the other thing you got to do is tell it where it can find this code. That's all going to be here in the project settings. And if you scroll down to the bottom and go to Python, there's going to be this additional path section. So this is where you want to put the site packages folder, which is your default modules installation location. And then the second path is going to be wherever you want to save your openai window.py file. You can put it anywhere you want. Just make sure you tell Unreal where to look for it. The next thing you got to do is install a few modules. PySide 2 is for the UI. OpenAI is obviously for OpenAI. And then Clipboard is for the functionality to highlight text and then pass it over to a web browser. So in order to use pip install, what you want to do is copy this line exactly and then go to a command prompt and type it in. And uh, look at that, do for an upgrade. So there you go. That's all you got to do to install the modules and to get Unreal ready to run this code. So in terms of the UI, I built everything using Qt Designer, which exports a UI file. Here in the code, you're going to need a path to that file. There's my file, and here is the path where it happens to be living. I would recommend that you put it wherever you want to save the Python file itself, because I'll just kind of keep things ni nice and easy. You can have a bunch of paths going everywhere. Very quickly, this code here is based off a template which is available on my Unreal Developer Network page right here. If you'd like to learn how to build tool UIs for both Maya and Unreal, I've got a, about an hour and a half long course here that covers the entire process. I have some other things here as well that are also very useful. And if you go to my showcase link, it's going to be a general introduction to using the Unreal Python API. So these are good resources and they're all for free and I invite you to, to grab them. Here's the UI tool template, which is where most of this code comes from. Just running through it very quickly, this is going to be identifying elements of the UI. We're going to set up a project save directory variable, which I use a later on. 
a style sheet to control some of the, the behavior of how it looks. And then this is where the code is going to go. So this is as simple as the prompt needs to be. Basically, we're going to get the prompt text from uh, the upper field of the UI. And then it's going to grab the response. We're going to use a little bit of some dictionary stuff here to grab what the value uh, of the response is. And then we're going to th throw it in the, the lower text field. I am using the text DaVinci 003 model. If you want to use the GPT 3.5 Turbo or some other model, chances are it's going to require different formatting for how you set up your prompt. And uh, I've got this included but commented out. This was very conversational and required me to go in and delete a bunch of preamble that didn't just run by default. I just wanted to look at the code and uh, the uh, text DaVinci 003 model seemed to generate code without too much trouble. Then we've got some other methods here, running the script within Unreal, saving the Python file, and then searching the reference. If you're curious about how any of this stuff works, please feel free to check it out. Otherwise, it should be pretty much plug and play. Again, you need to update your API key. You need to install the modules and you need to let Unreal know where the stuff lives and it should work for you right out of the box. So I will be hosting all of this information, the UI file and the code here on my Epic Dev Community page. There will be a link on my YouTube channel and also in my ArtStation page. So depending on where you've come across this information, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult to track this page down. Happy to engage in a conversation about this. I really don't know where it's gonna go and I probably left some low hanging fruit on the, uh, on the tree, so to speak. So if you've got any suggestions or recommendations for how I can get more out of this, please feel free to let me know. All right, thank you very much.